Hey there, home labbers and engineers. FE Engineer here. So today we're going to take a look at setting up stable diffusion for AMD GPUs in Windows with a few more functionality pieces than what Automatic 11.11 usually lets us do since we don't have Rockm quite yet. For this, we're going to try out Nod AI Shark. It's fairly similar, it has a lot of pieces, but it runs Stable Diffusion differently. So I want to spend a minute talking about who this is really good for and who should use this versus who maybe should not use it. So a couple of the reasons why you might want to use it. First of all, it is a one-click install. It is dead simple. Secondly, it works on Windows. It has fast iterations per second. It allows in-painting. It's very easy to use this tool because it has somewhat limited options. It has the newer samplers like DPM++2 M Keras, which I constantly get asked why that is not in the other DirectML web UI. And of course, you can download custom models from Civitai and things like that. So some reasons you might not want to use it. It is really slow to change models. It is really slow to change image dimensions and things like that. It downloads a lot. And it has pretty limited options when you want to generate images. It just does not have as many settings and parameters and things that you can fiddle with like some of the other automatic web UIs. So with that, let's take a look at installing Shark from Nod AI. So the very first thing we're going to do, we're going to come over to the GitHub page for Shark. We're going to look at this prerequisites because it says you have to do this. And for AMD users, it just says download the latest driver. Great. Well, I imagine virtually everybody already has the latest driver. After that, Download the stable release. So let's click on the stable release. And the stable release, there's just this .exe file. All we have to do is just click on this and download it. And it's about 475 megabytes. Once it downloads, one of the before you ever run it, make sure that you go somewhere on your computer that you want to save it. Make a new folder. So now we have a specific folder for it. And then I'm going to go over to my downloads and I am just going to copy the exe file into it. Once you copy the exe file, then you can double click on it. To get an idea of the number of things that it will be downloading, you can see here in my downloads folder, all of these things that it went ahead and downloaded, many of them multiple gigabytes. This is why you want to create your own folder to put it in and run the exe from there. When you run the exe, unsurprisingly, it will open up a big uh, command prompt and it will start downloading a bunch of things. It'll run a bunch of settings. It'll configure things. It does it all by itself. It doesn't ask you anything. And thankfully, it'll do things like say, found device, AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX, and it will continue just going along. One of the reasons why this is sort of fast, but sort of slow is that it uses Vulkan for the image generation, which is great. It's actually really fast. The only problem is it effectively has to compile Vulkan shaders virtually every single time that you change models or change sizes, etc. That's why I'm saying if you want to generate a lot of images that are like 512 by 512 and you just want to generate, 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 this will do great. If you want to use one model and then change to a different model and then change the size 
this is not going to do well. This is just going to take a very long time. Once you are up and running, after double clicking that exe, watching all of the many downloads, many of them many gigabytes, you will end up with a screen that looks sort of like this. And I can't remember what it is. The generic prompt is something about a car with smoke coming out of the tires, like a supercar. But anyway, so I went ahead, I went to Civitai, I downloaded a different model. This one is just called Real Cartoon 3D. I put in a prompt, Super Mario, highly detailed. Uh, and I left it at 512 by 512. I am using DPM plus plus 2M Keras. It's named something differently, but in this one it's named DPM Solver Multi-Step Keras plus plus. So we have a lot of different samplers here that we can play with. Steps out of the box, it only goes up to 100. The CFG scale, for some reason, on here, it puts it at 7.5. It does have a low VRAM setting. It does have high res fix. I would recommend don't use it because just like I told you how changing models takes a long time, if you use high res fix, it's going to generate your model this way and then load in a new model and do high res fix. And so it will take a really long time. Uh, down here in device, you'll see I've got Vulcan 0, Vulcan 1, Rockham 0, Rockham 1, CPU. The Rockham doesn't work because Rockham doesn't work in Windows. CPU is slow as can be. Vulcan 0 is my 7900 XTX, and Vulcan 1 is actually my integrated GPU, which obviously we do not want to use for this. But you can see that I generated this 512 image that's supposed to look kind of like Super Mario Brothers. And what we'll do, because this space is somewhat limited, we'll send it to InPaint. And in InPainting, we'll swap over the prompt. We'll swap over, copy and swap over the negative prompt. And now maybe inside of here, maybe I want all of this to go away. Whatever that was, I didn't like it. So let's do that. So with here, we can set our, set our scheduler. Height, width, don't change it, steps. You can in-paint the whole area. Generate image. Oh, what is it doing? Is it, oh yeah, it's gotta change models. This is gonna take a few minutes. And you'll see that it did in fact change and, and generate this with in-painting exactly as we expect it left basically everything the same. It only changed this one little area in the bottom corner. Just so that people can see, now that it's all set up, I'll do it again. And now it changed this background. And you'll see that for me, it took 4.5 seconds and that's at 100 steps. So it does end up getting about 20 some iterations per second. Sometimes a little faster, sometimes a little slower for me. And that is roughly comparable and actually slightly better than what I get with Rock'em. You may notice up here at the top, there's something called Chatbot. Don't use it. I tried using it. It downloads these seven Llama 7B models that are 13 or 14 gigabytes each. And it just didn't seem to work appropriately. I did eventually get it to work, it just was terrible. For anybody who is wanting to download a model, the, the one that I used today was Real Cartoon 3D. I have not tested Stable Diffusion XL models running on Shark, but in Civitai you can come down to any model you want, get download options, click on it. This one had a pruned version and a non-pruned version. I used the non-pruned version. Once that downloaded, 
because I ran my exe file straight out of downloads first, it ended up putting my models folder inside of downloads. But for you, since you ran your exe in some folder, inside of there you should also have a models folder. You can double click on it. And all you will need to do is any file that you download like from Civitai, like a safe tensors file, just drop it straight inside of models. And after that, you will have to exit out of Shark entirely and then reload Shark from the EXE entirely. And after you do that, it will pick up this model. There's no way for it to pick up the model in real time with it open and running. But you'll see that here inside of Shark AI, you'll see it has that real cartoon model and it will also tell you here the custom model path is this path right here. And for you, wherever that model path is, that's where you need to drop your models. One last point on the Shark web UI right here, you will notice there is not a spot for extensions, meaning that effectively what they have in here in painting, out painting, image to image, upscaler, chatbot, etc. What they have in here is what they have. There is not really a good system in place to extend it or anything like that. And for many people, this may not be a big deal or a problem at all. However, if you wanted to, for instance, install Dream Booth, you can't. If you wanted to put in Control Net, nope, it is not in here. So again, there are a lot of people that are going to find this to be great and it's really easy to install, just literally one click. But if you wanted more control and extensions and things like that, this may not be the solution for you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has helped some folks who uh, wanted to get Stable Diffusion up and running but really didn't want to deal with Linux or Rockham or the command line very much. This is in fact a one-click installer, so I have to applaud Nod AI for building this in the way that it does seem to just sort of work. Good luck. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching my videos, home labbers and engineers. I create and edit all of these videos on my own, so any likes and subscribes will massively help out the channel and allow me to continue creating content to help people. If you got value out of this, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel to be notified when new content drops. If there's something I've not covered but you would like to see a video on it, please leave a comment down below. And again, a massive thank you to everyone. I hope you have a great day.